I graduated from the University of Toronto in 1891, and during my time there, I completed the Honours Program for Political Sciences, receiving my Bachelor's Degree in 1895 and a Master's Arts Degree in 1897. I had also attended Harvard University and earned a Doctor's Degree for a report on my stance in Oriental Immigration in Canada. I became the Prime Minister of Canada in 1921. During 1900, I was called to work in the Federal Department of Labor, attracting the attention of our former Prime Minister, Laurier. He promoted me to the highest civil service position as a Deputy Minister. I entered politics in 1908, having one seat in the House of Commons, and at the same time became Minister of Labor through him. After Due to Canada's large-scale involvement in the war, I was able to demand a larger voice in international affairs. This level of influence allowed me to develop an intimate bond with the U.S. President at the time, Franklin D. Roosevelt. We worked at conflicting war orders together. We provide them access to new British naval bases in America, and even encouraging Roosevelt to free up funds for the British. I was in control of Canada's anti-Semitic policies before the Second World War. Roosevelt asked me to join the states in admitting refugees from countries like Austria to Germany during 1938, but I believe that there is no use in bringing an international issue to another nation. Canada must be cautious of being used for a wide open space I was a Presbyterian, however, I later became a spiritualist. This meant that I frequently tried to make contact with the spirit world to confirm my decisions. I even spoke to my mother through sciences when I was lonely. I mostly contacted the spirit world through my dreams. I did keep a detailed personal diary for most of my life in which I wrote about my personal and spiritual life. When I first met Adolf Hitler in Berlin in June 1937, I was optimistic about it and very impressed by Hitler. He seemed to be a reasonable mind and a man of deep sincerity. He smiled pleasantly and had an affectionate look in his eyes. I praised Hitler's regime and was very happy after leaving Berlin, tremendously relieved and believing that there would be no war. It was a most enjoyable and I did not do much during the Great Depression. In truth, I was reluctant to acknowledge it and did not believe it would seriously affect Canada. I refused to provide federal funding to the people in the provinces who are unemployed. As a result, I was defeated by the Conservative led by R.P. Bennett in 1930s election. I was determined to avoid war and therefore supported Britain's appeasement policy of Germany. I hoped war could be avoided by accepting Hitler's aggressive war, hoping he would soon be satisfied. I was determined to avoid bringing Canada into an overseas conflict that would upset the frail harmony of our country at the time. My government expanded the National Research Council of Canada during the war. Canada established Chalk River Nuclear Laboratories where they conducted research of nuclear physics and nuclear power. Canada became a world leader in this field. As well, the NRX reactor became operational in 1947. At the time, the NRX was the only operational nuclear reactor. Ever since World War I, 
Anglophones and Francophones would never get along because of the conscription process. Dealing with this problem would have to be one of the most challenging things any Prime Minister would have to overcome. Luckily, I'm a genius, so I decided to create a publicite which allows the Canadians to vote on whether I should conscript or not. The result was as expected a tie. However, I made a compromise which allows both French and the English to win. I created the National Resources Mobilization Act in June 21, 1940 to allow overseas conscription and conscription for home defense. From April 1941, unless you're physically enabled to do so, young men were called up to serve the country. This made Canadian war effort more effective because there are more men volunteering to fight on behalf of Social programs such as unemployment insurance, pensions, welfare, and family allowance have impacted many Canadians greatly, and these programs exist because many Canadians paid their taxes during World War II. I came up with the Canadian Citizenship Act and became the first Canadian citizen. Not to mention I did an amazing job in preventing the divide between Anglophones and Francophones. The majority of the Canadians felt jealous that the Japanese people were more successful than they were. When Japanese suicide bombers bombed Hawaii, Canadians wanted to believe that Japanese descendants living in the West Coast are not to be trusted, especially when they have votes. As a Canadian Prime Minister, I had no choice to provide safety for all Canadians. Therefore, I decided to move all Japanese people inland at an internment camp and saw all their belongings at an Providing a flight school for World War II war pilots were one of Canada's greatest contributions. I decided to create the BCATP, which stands for the British Commonwealth Air Training Program, because Canada was successful in training the pilots in World War I. Not only did Canada have wide open space, which provides a place for air training, but the place is also quite far away from enemy bombs.